Now, I brought, I brought my happy cup with me this morning. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, Family and friend, Friends Day is an important day to us because we want to find out if any of you are friendly <laughs> enough to bring a friend. You know, I mean, it does mean something when you can dare bring somebody to church. I mean, you might go to a football game that you bought the ticket for, or they might go take you to dinner or whatever. But to bring somebody to church, really? You're doing good. Amen. We do have many people that are out today, so don't be unaware of that. Uh, Gene's on his way back today, I believe. Uh, he's been in California hugging a little baby. Grace, Grace, and uh, others are uh, out and about, um, and Tammy was here this morning, uh, Bob's away over in Daytona, there's some, something going around the circle for 24 hours, turning left all the time, you know, but regardless, we're glad you're here. Uh, Family and Friends Day is a day we get to really hug on each other and bless one another, conversation. More about them than you, you know. Just work with each other. So, Father, I, I release faith for these next few moments that we grow in the Lord. That, Father, things happen in our lives that haven't happened yet because of your word being brought about. You told us that we could be your friend. Not just that you would be our Lord and Savior, but you yourself said we could be your friend. Servant doesn't know what's going on, but a friend, close friends, do. And they carry out your commands in Jesus' name. High five your neighbor and say, I'm certainly glad you're my friend. I need a friend as good looking as you. As a good looking friend as you, I need, I need you. And you may be seated. Praise God. Uh, I've been talking all year long that that we would be delving into Jesus' words. I believe, you know, as a believing believer, I mean, it ought to be obvious that we ought to pay more attention to Jesus' words than Paul's words. I love Paul. I grew up listening to Paul. I mean, I, the book of Ephesians, uh, every Bible I've got around here has Ephesians just almost torn out of the pages, you know. I mean, I highlight it. it. They ought to go ahead and just give me an award for highlighting so many scriptures, you know. I mean, it's in there. But I've come to revisit once again. Not that I was ever against anything Jesus said. But Jesus' words are important to pay attention to. They are life. And uh, they are filled with things that will help us grow up in the Lord. Amen? Uh, and I'm of the mindset that we ought to, let me go backwards here, that we ought to start every morning with some word from Jesus whenever you get up. And uh, you can follow my morning posts, but there are many. And I do put a plethora amount of pictures of what's going on in my life. And if I can't explain it with words, I explain it with pictures. And I'll probably do that again today here. Is that okay? But literally, when you check on my Facebook posts, Every morning is a brand new morning. This is not a picture that's a photo from yesterday or something. Every morning as I leave the porch out there, this is the last picture I take. You're prayed for. And uh, I thank God for that. Now, this church, the reason we're doing family and friends, we do it every fifth Sunday that there is a month. But this month is January, and we're trying to press your attention to what the future has in how we invest the seed that's here. Seed is an important thing to everybody. Amen? I mean, I'll just jump ahead right now. I think I've got them right here. Uh, let's see where I put them. I, I brought some seeds with me. I don't know if, uh, if camera three can give me a close-up on it, and you can see. What, what is that seed? Can you all tell? Uh, uh, I'm sorry? Maters. Uh, they're not tomatoes, they're maters, <laughs> a mater sandwich. I mean, I'll delve off into southern things because when I was young, you'd go out in the yard in the back in the, you know, where mama had tomatoes and okra and all them other things. You just take a tomato off and eat it right there. How many of y'all ever did that? How many of y'all ever made a mater sandwich? S some bread and slap some mayo on it and... 
Not, not miracle stuff. No, just mayo. <laughs> Slap it on there and eat it. Seeds are important, but it's understand what was already said today. Miss Cheryl talked about the seeds, and even if you captured it, um, Bill Horn talked about seeds for a moment. He said it's important to look to a seed and, and not just be seed, minded, but be harvest minded. Jesus said the harvest is now. That's why family and friends day is important to me that you captivate being a friend today. Not one day I'm going to see who I could be a friend with. Be a friend today. Jesus has already commanded us to do that. Now, some of our friends that we vetted and worked with and are continuing to work with are here listed here. This week I'm going to be, uh, Miss Cheryl and I are doing an uh, interview with Bob and Sonia, face-to-face, -face, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Zoom meeting. Zoom, zim, zam, boom meeting with Bob and Sonia, who are in the southern part of France, praise God. Miss Marta spent last summer over there, she, or I don't know, she spent a year over there, three months, I think, mean, you know. <laughs> I'm so glad she came back. I'm glad you're here this morning, too. That is a blessing. Um, but we're meeting with them and, and finding out what God's, the increase is there. They're building a wonderful place there. And... We uh, this week have talked with uh, Steve and Pam Spear. And Steve and Pam came to our church years, probably 20 years ago, in Daytona from Ramah, and just wonderful Bible students. But they have now traveled the world and landed in Poland. You know what's next to Poland? Ukraine. The Ukraine. And their assignment is huge and big. And uh, you need to know, we've got seed in the ground for the future there. And here's, here's what Steve said. Hello, Word of Faith Family Church and Pastor Steve and Cheryl. We send you our love from Poland. Unfortunately, Pamela is not on the call, but we do send you our greetings. And we want to thank you for your partnership as we've stepped into 2023. Great things God is doing here in this nation. We thank you for your support. Thank you that 28 students are being trained at Rama. that Chashna Shevom is on TV in Polska, and in June we will be hosting our first ever pastor's conference for over 40 pastors to be ministered. Wow. And lives impacted with the gospel and the presence of the Lord. Come on, and be happy. Family Church, we thank you for being a part of what God is doing in this nation for the kingdom. And so God bless you. We look forward to seeing you in March as we'll be traveling through Florida when we're back in the U.S. So blessings to you. Again, know that we're praying for you and we appreciate you. God bless. Amen. How about that? And know that we've got seed in New York and in Nagaland, India. Miss Rosella Rines was here this past week. And this morning she's back in Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. A spirit-filled uh, widow lady, <laughs> but I'm telling you, she is powerful. And she's, she's young enough that she just travels by herself and gets things done and is bold enough to go to Washington, D.C. Yeah. She's not there sightseeing, my friend. So, enjoy. We've got seed in the ground with her. Praise God we do. And uh, she's the one, she didn't originate the statement but if you can dream it, you can do it. Amen. Go for it. Amen. Keep your dreams forward. Don't, don't look back all the time. You can't go very far down the highway at a great amount of speed looking in the rearview mirror. Amen? So this morning, I want to share some things about being a friend. And uh, take your Bible, if you would. Turn over to John chapter 15. Uh, John is uh, one of the people of the Bible who was closest to Jesus personally. And in his last uh, days of being on earth here, he told John, look, take care of mom here. You know, I mean, that's something when you can tell a friend, take care of my mom. You know, that, that's a trust factor there. And then your Bible ends with the revelation of Jesus, uh, the book of Revelation, not Revelations, and it's not a book of doom and gloom. It's a book of great joy. 
and it tells about Jesus. And uh, Jesus' words were captivated, I think, best, not just through Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but in John we find a lot of verbiage that Jesus had to give to his disciples to give to us. In John chapter 15, we find this. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for who? For his friends. Now, to clarify that, he said to the disciples, look at this. You, you, you guys, and I'm saying it to you, you are my friend. If you do whatsoever I command you. That's the way Jesus framed that. And then he clarified it because in the kingdom of heaven, there are a lot of people think that, well, I'm just on the servant side. I just want to serve Jesus. Well, if you're going to serve Jesus, be like a servant, like a waiter or a waitress. Serve. You know, bring whatever is necessary. But he doesn't consider you a servant. Yeah, but I'm just going to serve the Lord in my own way. That's not what he said. His words were, you're a friend. And then he went on to say in 15, verse 15, Henceforth, I don't call you a servant anymore, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you what? Friends. Hug yourself and say, I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of Jesus. I am a friend of Jesus. Some people might think theologically, well, that's too irreverent. Oh, we've got to, we've got to honor Jesus. Listen, your best friends, they are closest to your heart. My wife is not only my wife, she became my best friend early, 50 years ago this September. Hallelujah. So for 51 years, I've known her. I could not be without her. I needed her, but... She kind of put up with me when we first met. She said, well, people are saying you like me or something and all this. And, you know, I said, no, I love you. You don't even know me yet. You know, I mean, it was like we, we went through uh, in, in my invitation to her, my, my asking would she become my wife. I thought, this is the diving board that I've always feared, diving off and... <laughs> And she says no, and there's no water in the pool. <laughs> but she didn't. Praise God. Do you love my wife? Come on. Be happy for me at least. Come on. Be happy for me at least. But I called you friend. Jesus wants to be a friend to you. For all the things that I've heard of my father, I've made certainly known to you. You and I are loved. You and I are His children, and we are never alone. Quit thinking, well, I don't know, I never hear from God. Well, maybe if you'd open the book more and read the pages that are in red ink, you might hear more from Him. Yeah, well, I don't understand it. Well, He even says in the red, I'm sending the Holy Comfort, the Spirit of God, who will teach you in all things. Maybe you're not teachable yet. I don't know what the deal is. But if it's in red and he said it, believe it. Deal with it, okay? Praise God. Now, there have been many people who've told us through the years to preach the gospel. How many of you love to hear a fireball Pentecostal preacher? Well, I wish I was one, but I'm going to do <laughs> But I am a communicator. But here's, here's a meme that you may have seen before. Uh, Frank... Uh, uh, St. Francis of Assisi. I don't know why they call him Assisi. I don't think that was it. That was a town. Said, preach the gospel at all times. And others have said, preach the gospel, as he quoted, at all, at all times and when necessary, use words. What does that infer? What does that infer? If you don't use words, what must you do? Your actions. So how you deal with people. I mean, if you want to go and take somebody to lunch, how they deal with a waitress or not, or the waiter or not, or how you deal with a waiter or not, says a lot more about you or them than it does your conversation. Get to know the waiter's name or the waitress's name. Ask them. 
Well, they don't know me. They can't know you until you introduce yourself. Get their name. Have any of y'all been through Chick-fil-A drive-in? What's the first thing they do when you drive through Chick-fil-A? Ask your name. Say it again. Ask your name. They ask your name. Well, the few times I've been through, particularly at Christmas we would go through, they had a particular mint chocolate peppermint thing that we liked. But I, w- I would drive up and I started doing this. My name is Steve. What is yours? <laughs> And you know what I found out? The name they give you is not their name. But I found out one other thing. It's good to treat them just like you would treat any other waitress or waiter. I've had them tell me how much the coffee is or how much whatever it is we're buying. And I try to have a dollar bill at least or two dollars, you know, something small. But if you're just buying a drink or something, You know, it won't be a big bill to that. But when I've paid that, I then say, here, here, this is for you. Communication. They won't forget you. They'll probably remember your name if you go there often. Hello. But preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, what? Use words. Can you love somebody without words? Certainly. Many do. Think of the life that Helen Keller led without being able to speak, without being able to see. What a life she had and used them without words. Now, I know this could get irreverent for a moment, but preach the gospel at all times. Yes. Everybody say yes. 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 Preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Well, how about this? Catch this, okay? Okay. If necessary, use memes. <laughs> Do you all know what a meme is? Okay. Preach the gospel. Well, here's my meme for the morning. <laughs> Wishing you a terrific family, friendly, <laughs> family and friends Sunday. Laugh with your eyes. Come on. Make your eyes. Smile with your soul. Hug with your heart and love with your spirit. Glory. Put your hands together and say, that's me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let me help you out a little bit then. Uh, Friends are the family you choose for yourself. Miss Cheryl and I have been uh, pastoring for 22, 23 years or so. I I wish I knew the correct number. It keeps, you know, we keep getting a a little bit toward middle age and you forget what the early time was. And 70, by the way, is the new 30. Amen? Amen. Help me out a little bit. Somebody told me that the other day. (laughs) I think it was Bob. (laughs) Jesus said, all men will know that you are my disciples if you keep showing love among yourselves. One thing about a family and friends day, we ought to love one another. We ought to not back away from helping one another. We ought to believe that we can help change somebody's life, not by preaching at them, but by loving them. And love, rooted in Jesus, will always bring them forward. It won't condemn them ever. You know? And real friends that are real friends will treat you like the best part of your family. I do believe that. So, let me tell you about part of my family growing up. Would you look down to the left, the little star, is your pastor here in the fifth grade. I was a nerd of nerds. I was a schoolboy patrol. They put this thing on you, and I thought it was something wonderful. I found out later, that's what the nerdy kids do is go out there and help the guy that's helping kids across the street. I didn't know that. I was also starting to take piano, okay, at the same time. I wasn't allowed to go play sports, not because it was wrong, but because I had asthma. And uh, I couldn't get out and run without having an asthma attack. So in the midst of all that, I just found myself, hey, it's what I got, so I'll go for it. And then college. This is one of the many college pictures I got. But friends, they'll, they'll, they'll become family to you. This is some years ago. Uh, still got the hat on, though. So <laughs> uh, meeting from the uh, late 60s into the 70s, friends that I've known. Uh, one lady on the right there is uh, 
uh, was, ran, was part of Advent Hospital Chaplaincy. Uh, the next little guy next to me, to my left, is Joe Motley. He lives in North Georgia now. He lived here in Florida. But he's still my friend. He was, after college, he was Donald Duck at Disney the first year. Huh? That's Donald Duck right there. <laughs> and the guy to the left across from me is a bass player that played with me. There's pictures of him on back on the wall. They're still friends. They're like family to me. Wow. Glory to God. And real friends treat you like family if you'll do what is right. Amen? Yeah. Now, the best of times always are found when family and friends get together. Don't you think? How many of you love Christmas and getting together with family and friends? Now, sometimes you have to plan your coming and going with certain family and friends, you know. Uh, we found out through the years that some folks don't like to come together because they're still mad over something that happened when Mama did something way back there 40 years ago. Get over it. Let your life move forward. Amen? Amen. And family and friends, the wonderful thing about it is... <laughs> at least to me, I think, is that <laughs> the best, like I say, the best of it all is that even in church, you get to know people, not micromanage their lives, but know them and can stand in agreement and faith with them. It's important that you realize that not everybody knows your problem like you know it, but we all are here to help one another and those of you watching right now, we're here to help you. Uh, by the way, I'm Pastor Steve. I, my wife and I, this is word of faith, not word of doubt. We're here to help you. I mean, we, we want to help you get the answers. And the answers are in the book, most of them in red, some of them from Paul who knew Jesus personally, intimately. But we want to help you. Amen. Glory to God. But, now, you have to learn this growing up. Now, I, I don't mind telling you that I, as I was growing up, uh, and particularly through college days, let me get this back on here. I didn't have my best of days through my college days. I kind of went way left out there somewhere and uh, wound up, getting saved one night with two other guys around a coffee table at four o'clock in the morning. We had smoked all we knew to smoke, and we were then trying catnip. <laughs> catnip does not work. And we started mocking what was going on in church. I was actually organist at a, at a church at the time, playing pipe organ and perusing all the ladies in the choir, you know. Here I am in college, I'm thinking I'm a single guy, maybe she'd like to date me and I'll play her some music sometime. You know, I, I, goofy stuff. But we got saved, the three of us, around this coffee table when we started mocking, would you believe it, prayer. Oh, this prayer thing doesn't work. And we said, let's just try it. Oh, God, oh, God. And you know what happened? The three of us. You might think it was the, uh, what we had imbibed. <laughs> you might think it what we were smoking. But God showed up at that moment. Wow. Amen. And we started crying at this coffee table. Wow. I'm going like, oh man, do y'all feel that? Yeah. Wow. You think God's real? I don't know, but. <laughs> so at 7 o'clock, I called my pastor. Stayed up the rest of the night, just, wow. Uh, Brother Tyner, First Baptist, Madison, Florida. This is my second, third college along the way, second college along the way. Uh, Pastor Tyner, uh, me and Steve and uh, David uh, Guthrie, we want to we wanna meet with you if we could. Uh, I think we just got saved. Uh, I think that's what you say. <laughs> And he said, well, come on down. I'm at the office now praying. And so 720, we were down there and wide-eyed as we were. And he was looking at us like, what in the world? He prayed for us and made sure that we knew what had just happened. Well, those are things that happen in your life. But you need to know that from that, you need to grow in the Lord in every way. 
you need to be, and I was taught in the Lord. I went to the Baptist church young, you know, went to every kind of meeting there was to be at. And, um, but you have to grow in the Lord to learn how to love people that aren't family. Now, family you're stuck with, okay? But friends can become family, and you ought to welcome that. You ought to treat them with honor. You ought to be kind to them. Now, I want to show you a, a short little video, Is it, if it's okay. There's no popcorn with this. Uh, but I want to show you a short video about a dad and a daughter. The dad wanted to teach the daughter things about life, and he found a wonderful song about being a friend. And this three-year-old daughter, I think she was at the time, by the name of Claire, learned the song with dad. The daughter is now 12, by the way. But this, I think, will help you and uh, bless you here. Amen. This is... You guys friend and me? Yep. By Claire and Dad. By Claire and Dad. line for all of us today we have an opportunity in this few moments that we have together there's great food there's great fellowship about to happen for all of us conversations that you may have never had before now the word tells us in proverbs 27 by the way don't you think it's wonderful how so much wisdom is packed in that one book do you like that early on miss cheryl will verify i taught our son as he was growing up you know, sitting at the breakfast table early mornings, first grade, second grade, third grade. I taught him every morning. He had a box of Cheerios there, but I read him Proverbs in King James. Probably wasn't the smartest thing, but I did. As he grew up, he learned more and more. And some years ago, he started a, a page called Proverbs and Wisdom. Okay? He's now 41. But back then, we went through Proverbs every day. Can I suggest something to you? Get you a good translation that will speak to you. Go through Proverbs every day. Well, I don't have time. Well, let me tell you something. Reading the words like breathing. You need 
the air. You definitely need the word because the world's full of stupid. I mean, I don't want to go down that train, you know, wreck or train track, but the world's stupid right now. 300,000 people came into the country and they don't know where they're at. How about drag queens teaching your second grader? Or not if they have a gender. They don't know. There was a politician on the last couple of days said, look, there's God made man and God made woman. We already knew that, right? How many of y'all know what gender you are? Do I say this or not? Okay. <laughs> okay, I won't. You missed a good one. <laughs> As iron sharpens iron, so one person must sharpen each other. We need to help one another. Amen. I miss uh, Mr. Lee and Miss Linda Markowitz are here this morning, and I'm so glad they were away last weekend with a. Uh, the ordination of one of our close friends, uh, Thelma. But she, more even than Miss Cheryl and I, uh, we, we attended the homegoing of Frida Bowers a couple of, was that Thursday a week ago? But Linda has a unique relationship of 23, Seven. 27 years, one day at a time, with a friend, Frida. And you know, that's a vacuum when the friend leaves. But praise God, we know where she's at. She's not lost. Don't ever describe somebody that's died as being lost. <laughs> it, it, it astounds me that believers, well, I don't know, I've lost them now. Are you kidding? No. Famous preacher from Chicago said, uh, one day, you'll read that I've died in the newspaper. You'll read that I'm not here. Don't believe a word of it at that moment, for at that moment I'll be more alive than you are. Amen. Heaven's a real place. Yes. Let's encourage each other to go. And may I tell you about that? You're on earth. You and I are on earth right here. This is as much hell as we will ever deal with. What the stuff we're going through. But can I tell you sadly something else? Unrepented sinners, this is as much heaven as they'll ever know. God's not trying to get us to be so heavenly minded we don't do what he said to do. He doesn't need us today in heaven. He needs us to be the believing believer that we're called to be here. And may I tell you something? The devil doesn't care if you go to heaven or hell. He just doesn't want you to be here doing what you're called to do. That's why it's good to be a real friend. This scripture points out something too, and I'll wrap it up with this. I, I, I'm real keen about Proverbs. Uh, <laughs> verse 18, 24. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Yes. Glory to God for yes. Jesus. I am so thankful that Jesus came and did what he did. I'm so thankful that you and I are not missing out on what he had planned for us. And it all comes down to something Jesus said and read again. <laughs> this is my commandment, that you love one another in the same way that I loved you. In the same chapter we are in. Glory to God. I, I want you to know God's up to good things for every one of us. Amen? Amen. Now, I want us this morning, I know we've already prayed for each other, but as I close, I want us to think, how could you, just in your finite little being, help somebody today with an answer that they don't even know, you, I mean, that you don't even know that you're giving them? You see, that's where love and kindness walks in. I have talked to people, just talked to them in the natural, and left it and think, well, nothing's going to come of that. And a year later, 10 years later, 
I don't know, 20 years later, somebody come back to me and say, what you said back then changed my life. Can you believe that? Everybody raise your hand and say, I'm a believer. I am not a doubter. <laughs> God wants to use every one of us. You think about the background of a man like Paul, the background of a man like Jonah, who in the face of God in the Old Testament said, forget it, I ain't going to Nineveh. I'll leave. But God prepared a fish <laughs> to turn him around. Paul was killing Christians. But God prepared an interruption. He got a light shone in his face, kicked off his, his uh, donkey. <laughs> he got knocked to the floor or the ground and found out that God had a plan for him. Hallelujah. I don't care what your past is. You need to decide today I'm moving forward. Things are going to happen in my life that have never happened before. It's what Brother Copeland said. This year is going to turn out, how does it say it? As good as it can. And that's not a minimum. That's, that's the maximum. How good do you have thoughts of it coming to you? Glory to God. God's in the middle of building His church. We're His body. and We have to move forward and do what He wants us to do. And I'll close with this. We need to spend more time pursuing God and have a greater expectation about what God's going to do. I'm looking forward to this week. Tonight's Billy Burke's meeting. I have no idea what will happen there. I know God will show up. Thank God. Tomorrow morning, where you're seated across here, Billy Burke, this is private, the doors will be locked, but Billy Burke is coming to tape four or five TV shows in here. We set up different and turn things around. We use the facility. Tuesday morning from 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock, there will be prayer in here for our nation, for our politicians, for, for the government to turn back to God. We stand in agreement that schools will not be injured by stupid school board's curriculum. Getting books out of there that should never be in there. We're praying. Glory to God. A lot of other things happening this week. Stand with me if you would. And let's believe this. You know, you've heard me pray it many times. Uh, these five words. That there's favor available for you. I like favor, don't you? Not just a parking place. Not just the best seat in the restaurant. I like real God favor things. Where suddenly a bill is canceled. Where suddenly... Uh, a check, unexpected check comes in the mail. When suddenly somebody walks up and says, I don't know why I'm doing this, but the Lord told me to do it. Why healing comes when you stand on the word and expect it and it comes.